hi guys welcome back to my channel today I want to show you how to do thermal denaturation using the CD machine you want to rinse your cuvette with ethanol then water and pipette your sample into the cuvette so with normal CD you will measure the molar ellipticity over wavelengths going from 190 to 250 nanometers and when you have an alpha helix you get the blue curve and you get a minimum at 222 nanometers so for thermal denaturation you're going to basically heat your protein and denature it so you're going to decrease the absorption um, so in thermal denaturation you're basically going to heat your protein and denature it and it's going to lose its alpha helical fold so the 222 nanometer molar ellipticity will decrease over time but this can happen either slowly or in a very um, quick way and this will either give you a curve where the transition is very uh, smooth or very sharp so this can tell you about um, the stability of your protein and it's a very useful technique normally the 222 nanometer uh, wavelength is monitored over uh, increasing temperature but you can first do a test and determine if this uh, wavelength is actually the best one So now the first thing that we have to do is turn on the nitrogen gas. And yeah, make sure that there is actually um, gas flowing because sometimes you will see some people will mess with these knobs and you won't get a flow read here. So make sure there is a flow and a level of 20 is good. Then since we are doing thermal denaturation and temperature is important, we are going to turn on the liquid cooling system. After a few minutes have passed, you can turn on the machine by using this switch here. Then open the Spectra Manager. Before we actually do a thermal denaturation, just do a simple measurement to make sure that you are getting signal and everything's um, okay. For that, I already have a video and you go to Spectra Measurement and wait five minutes until uh, the whole instrument is purged with nitrogen okay so once that's done put your sample in yeah definitely don't forget to put your sample in it sometimes happens when you might forget and you see no signal for no reason then go to measure sample measurement select cell one only okay start because I just want to see that everything is okay I'm not saving this one so yeah everything seems fine but yeah, everything seems fine so far um, I would say my sample is slightly dilute. It's best to have your minimum be around minus 20, but overall it's very clean and this shows that there isn't too much salt or 
aggregation otherwise you would see a lot of noise towards the, this end Lastly, it is alpha helical so we have a good starting um, structure okay so now that we have our spectra and we are sure that we are starting with a folded structure we can close this window we'll go to the variable temperature measurement then you want to go to measure and go to parameters and you will get these information that you have to put in so I start at 10 degrees and go to 80 degrees but you can do more or less but this is a good range um, 10 degrees is definitely folded and 80 degrees is definitely unfolded and disordered and the interval that I want to do my measurements at is every degree but you can also do maybe every 5 degrees but it all depends on um, how much you care about this experiment the more you care about it the uh, more intervals will help you determine the transition uh, melting temperature better uh, so gradient per minute one weight is zero and, con and control se sensor is where you sense the temperature so there's a little uh, sensor in the sample holder that I will show you is this thing and right now it is at the holder if you wanted to measure from the sample uh, which would be cell 1 you would have to put this inside uh, the sample uh, the actual cuvette but that's uh, not necessary, the holder is usually good enough, so we're going to select holder for control sensor. The monitor sensor, we are also going to select holder. Uh, I will select halt temperature ramping during measurement because this way it is more accurate. Otherwise it will keep going up while it is reading your uh, measurement so you can select reverse if you like this will um, do everything in reverse after you reach 80 degrees it will bring the temperature down and some for some proteins the uh, denaturation can be reversible but for my case it definitely is not so I will not bother doing this but if it's your first time uh, I would say try it uh, then you want to go to the next thing, uh, the next window, so start condition, these are all good, return to start temperature after it's finished, yes, then which channels do I want to measure, yeah I don't want to measure absorption, I want to just have two channels and for the first one I want the CD. And the second one is the HT. And so for channel one, we have 222 nanometers. And for channel two, I don't want to measure anything. And delete that. And I would like a DIT of one second. Um, these are not written on stone and the bandwidth, bandwidth of 2 nanometers uh, but yeah these based on my experience have worked well so these numbers are also fine then going to control correction I don't want any but if you want to correct it with a blank you can do that uh, shutter is opened and closed automatically yes information so this is from the last person and I don't uh, need this but if you're using the if you have more than one sample 
you can just do that and uh, yeah and it will measure all of them one after the next we're only doing one sample uh, after you select the folder that you want to save your uh, data in you choose string number here and you choose a name for what you want to save but if you want to do multiple samples you can do sample number and it will use whatever you put in here as the name of each uh, of your uh, sample like data and it will go through each sample that you have so first it will measure one two then it will do whatever you have and it all depends on what you fill here so this is how easy it is to do multiple measurements if you like yeah we are done select ok easy as that and after this we can just uh, select this sample measurement and do cell 1 again and OK. The whole uh, experiment will take about roughly 50 minutes or one hour um, but if you have multiple samples definitely use the uh, tool that I just showed you this way you don't have to come back and check every hour and you will not waste any like time in between so I definitely recommend doing that thing that you want to make sure before doing a thermal denaturation because it does take about an hour if you're doing um, it the way I'm doing it you want to make sure that you have enough nitrogen left otherwise it's um, not good for the instrument and you might burn the light we're just waiting until the temperature reaches uh, 10 degrees and for this you definitely don't want to skip it like I did the first time and let it reach the selected temperature okay, so the experiment has begun as you can see uh, yeah but it will take some time so I will be back in an hour to show what I got and as you can see the temperature range is 10 to 80 the wavelength measured is 222 nanometer which again is this minimum over here which is a good sign of alpha helical alpha helicity as you would say in my studies, I study a protein that really, really likes to bind lipids. So it has hydrophobic parts that when it's left alone in water, it's not very happy. But when it's bound to lipid, it is happy. So when I do a thermal denaturation on my protein versus my protein in the presence of lipids, I see that the melting temperature is higher for the lipid bound form so uh, as you can see this is a very useful technique to look at um, what kind of conditions make a protein more stable and more happy so as you can see the um, 222 nanometer over time going from 10 degrees up to 80 degrees as you can see by by like 42 degrees or something it is completely denatured but um yeah the melting temperature would be somewhere considered in between this uh, ramp here so yeah this is uh, the melting temperature the final curve and then I will show you how this can get uh, compared and what that means. So you can go to um, File, Overlay, and choose uh, another experiment that you ran before and then overlay it and compare it to 
the data that you have. Here I have two different uh, spectra overlaid. The first one that I'm showing in blue is just a uh, protein. And the second one is protein with lipid present. And as you can see, the, trans the thermal melt uh, transition temperature or TM or melting temperature for uh, the lipid free form is roughly 37 degrees Celsius, but in the presence of lipid, it will increase um, up to about 45 degrees, a little bit more. And you can see also the way it's ramping is very gradual for the lipid free form, but in the presence of lipid, it is very um, sharp. So um, this shows that uh, this shows that there is cooperativity here, and uh, by doing comparisons such as this uh, and plotting different thermal denaturation curves, you can um, compare different conditions, look at their transition um, and melting temperature, and also the differences in cooperativity in the melting. So this is a very useful technique in looking at stability, and I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. And don't forget to subscribe and uh, comment below which kind of experiments you would like to see tutorials for. I would be happy to make some for you. Again, once you're done, you want to close everything after you saved it, obviously, but it will automatically save as well. And I suggest saving it in a CSV format so you can replot it later on. So first, I'm going to turn off the water, the liquid cooling system. Then turn off the instrument. And finally turn off the nitrogen. And you want to make sure that it will go back down. And also remove your sample. And that's it. Cut out your sample and clean the cuvette again with ethanol and water for the next person to use. So thank you so much for watching the video. If you have a question, don't forget to comment and I will do my best to answer your question and thank you so much. Bye.